Hey there, Alex Kidman, today taking a look at the Huawei Watch D. That's this chunky little number on my wrist. Looks sort of like an Apple Watch Ultra, I suppose, in that it's big and it's chunky. But this is a very different kind of smartwatch with a very unique selling proposition. Now, Huawei, of course, here in Australia is predominantly now in the kind of wearables and audio space because by and large they're out of the phone space because of that whole Google thing. And they've produced some interesting devices in recent years in wearables, typically with really, really good battery life, but somewhat hampered by that Google block if you want to pair them with an Android phone. It's that weird situation where Huawei itself produces Android phones, but its wearables are actually easier to pair to iPhones. And actually, all of that is pretty much true of the Huawei Watch D, which sort of acts a bit like a supersized version of the Watch Fit 2 that you may have already watched my review of. And if not, Go and do that now. I'll wait. All good? Great. We're back. So the Watch D does all the usual things that you would expect a smartwatch to do. So it'll give you your notifications. You can control your music playback. It'll track your fitness. It's got a bunch of health sensors for things like skin temperature and heart rate and all the stuff that you'd very much expect out of a standard kind of smartwatch. But this is a smartwatch that Huawei wants 799 bucks, which puts it in the premium side of the fence. So how are they justifying that price? Well, it's certainly not in the design, which is chunky and comes in exactly one color with one band color. It's this black color and this black strap. Now there's a big reason for that. And the reason is because of its party piece. The thing that it does that no other smartwatch that I'm aware of yet does, and that is blood pressure sensing. Now, there are devices that will do this optically. They'll do a kind of an estimate, but this actually has one of those little pressure cuffs, like you might get if you went to a GP or you went to a hospital. It has one of those pressure cuffs actually built in, a tiny little balloon that inflates and takes a proper, reasonably accurate, they do not claim it's medically accurate, and that is important. I will get to that later. But reasonably accurate measurement just on your wrist. It's, it's, it's a neat bit of technology. I love the idea of a company saying, we want to do something very different in the smartwatch space and we're going to do it. That's what Huawei has done with the Watch D and that's admirable in its own right. But is admirable the same thing as here's a product you should buy? Sadly, I think the answer for most people is actually no and not yes. And here's why. There's a couple of challenges when you're setting this device up. It has that aforementioned issue where if you're setting up on an Android device, unless it's a Huawei Android device, you're going to have to sideload Huawei's app gallery, which is a bit of a mess, as I've said before, and then load Huawei Health in order to sync to it. Whereas if you're doing it off an iPhone, you just install Huawei Health off the App Store. Obviously, you have to decide about trusting medical data and so on, but that's a decision you presumably have already made if you've bought the Watch D. That being done, you've then got to measure out the band and the clasp. And I had a lot of trouble with this. Now, this may be because the specific unit that I'm testing with has undeniably been through the hands and on the wrists of a bunch of other reviewers before it got to me. And it's possible it's had a bit of wear and tear, a few bumps and knocks. I found it a little bit tricky to actually not just get the measurements right, but then get the clasp to hold and get the little inflatable cuff part to stay in place. Because if it, if it inflates but pops out from the side of the wrist, it fails the reading pretty much immediately. As you'd expect, it's not getting the right pressure, of course. So there's that. And then there's the issue of how much you actually need this for a $799 device, because it is not a full-on medical-grade device. And Huawei's quite clear about this. Its readings, to me, seem to be fairly accurate, and certainly accurate enough in that sense of letting you know about a trend. I've had a couple of readings out of it where I've gone, oh, I did not think my blood pressure was up that much. I didn't feel as though I was overexerted or, you know, there were obvious physical signs of distress or anything like that that would indicate why I was making that reading. But the point of these kinds of devices is more that trend of your overall blood pressure. If you are trending high, if you are trending low, if there's some kind of problem going on that this might demonstrate. This is why people have blood pressure cuffs in their own home, just standard consumer grade ones. That's what this is. Now, obviously, there's a convenience factor in having it on your wrist all the time. You can do the reading anytime you like. Now, that reading process is a kind of interesting one because what you have to do is you enable it and then you have to hold it up to your heart, not on your heart, but at the same level. It's probably going to have a little bit of a hissy fit because I'm talking while I'm doing this, actually. This will be interesting to see how it goes. But it's inflating as I'm saying this. 
and it's try certainly trying to take a measurement. It feels very weird, by the way, to have your wristband sort of tighten on you. It's not unpleasant. It's just odd, just downright odd. It feels like it's just tightening up as though your, your wrist is expanding or something. Although, of course, the reality is the reverse is true. So that is still taking its rating. It certainly hasn't failed on me yet. So while it goes, I'll, the challenge, I think, with this device is that it's not medical grade, obviously, but it's 799 bucks for that additional feature, which you'd really need to have and use exclusively. And for what it's worth, I will pop this up on the camera, but it's taken a reading. It's perfectly happy. It's now sending that to my phone um, so that I get that kind of trend data. Now, having that trend data, yeah, that's valuable. And certainly there are people out there for whom regular blood pressure measurements are a very, very valuable resource. But the reality is you could do this with a standard kind of cuff, much, much cheaper, get a cheaper smartwatch, even a Huawei smartwatch, and have, I think, an overall more reliable and durable experience. As I said, I've had a couple of failures with readings. I've had one family member who really struggled to get this to work for them at all without it just continually failing readings. Again, that could be due to this unit having had a rough prior reviewer's life. I don't know. But I am struck by the fact that most of the rest of the feature set of this watch you can get on cheaper Huawei watches or on the Apple Watch SE, for example, if you want another cheap option, or on the Samsung Galaxy Watch or possibly even on the upcoming Pixel Watch. Don't know too much about that at the time of recording. But this is such a specific device with this specific little balloon cuff I worry that over time, because you're wearing it all the time, in theory, you're going to wear out that actual balloon cuff, at which point you'd need to get another cuff. You need to work out how much Huawei is going to charge you for that. There were two in the box that I tested, but I don't know that that's a standard. And it just strikes me it would be easier to get a regular cuff, do a morning test or whatever, and be done with it. You're paying an awful lot for that convenience of on-demand testing. Now, one thing I should point out, though, is that like most of the rest of Huawei stuff, the battery life on this is amazingly good. They claim seven days. It absolutely can do seven days. A big part of that, of course, is that it does the things that Huawei tends to do. So the screen uh, immediately drops off if you're not looking at it. The GPS lock will drop off if you change your mind on fitness routines. There's a lot of stuff going on here to maximize that battery life. It does put it over and above some of its competitors. So who is this best for? Well, look, if you do need that blood pressure sensing, if it, that's really critical to your health and you want a smartwatch and you're fine with the sidelining aspect on Android and you want the battery life, yeah, this is not a terrible buy. I don't think it's a great value buy, though. I think for a lot of people who are in that bucket, you could do just as well with a cuff and a different smartwatch, even a different cheaper Huawei smartwatch, if that's your style. For everyone else, yeah, it's it's a really cool idea. I love the idea that Huawei has done this, and maybe if they can iterate on it and make the bands and the compression cuff a little bit more integrated, a little bit more durable, then that could be a great, you know, Watch D2 or Watch D3 down the track. For right now, this is one I think more to keep an eye on, to be aware of in the market, but certainly at that $799 price point, I think it's a bit of a hard sell. So that's my take on the Huawei Watch D. What do you think? Got any questions? Let me know below. And as always, thanks for watching and don't forget to hit like and subscribe.